Computers were hard enough to understand when they were the size of this desk. Nowadays they fit into our plush toys and into our toothbrushes. And that is the power of software, it's so flexible. The only thing that needs to change is the code. Some kids see the computer as container of files and games, or as these very abstract networks of interconnected components. Sometimes the computer is a stage, sometimes a steampunk machine with interlocking gears inside. A computer can take on a thousand forms and serve a thousand functions. Computers can be mechanical, theoretical, electrical and maybe one day even biological. But they are always machines that process information according to specific instructions we humans give. One of the things that all computers share is the information processing system called input-output or I.O. Let's look at it in more detail. First of all, in order to interact with the computer, we need input. Input is when we do something to a computer or give it information. The input could be from a keyboard, a touchscreen, a sensor or even another program. Second, we need output, a way to get data out of the program. This could be to a screen, a pair of speakers or another program. When computers can both receive input and send output, like for example touch screens, we call it input-output or I.O. Instead of having to type in data, computers can automatically gather information about the world. We use senses to gather information about our body and the world around us. Computers don't have senses at all. Instead, they use sensors that are designed to measure data from their environment, everything from motion to temperature. Sensors can oftentimes do things that human senses can't, like see in the dark or learn about our health through multiple different sensors. Computers have things that are called the input devices and the output devices. Have you ever heard words like that? No, they're really hard words, but actually they are things that are fairly, fairly common. So, computers, everyone has used a mouse, right? Mm -hmm. That's an input device. Everyone has used a keyboard, yeah? That's an input device. What could an output device then be? It's the screen. It could be... What's this? Speaker. Speakers, exactly. What is... This, this is actually fairly hard. A charger. A charger, yeah. It's like a wireless charger uh, device. What about... Power bank. Yeah, power bank. What about this? A charger. This is a charger, yeah. What about... What is this? Uh, a disc uh, player? It's like you a printer, yes, a printer is an output device. What about this? Speaker. Speaker, um, oh no, microphone, yeah. This is a microphone, and would that be an input or an output device? Uh, input, exactly, so input device and then an output device. Good job. what all computers do. Whether it's the annoying beeping noise you hear when you forget to buckle your seatbelt in a car, or uh, when you swipe your card in a store, or you use a self-driving car. You probably have a hundred computers in your home and you interact with thousands of them on a daily basis. Which one of these do you think is a computer? None? Well, you know, a car is a computer. It has a navigation system inside of it. And a dog, a dog might not be a computer, but it has a collar and the collar might have a computer inside of it. And grocery stores, they have so many different kinds of computers inside of them, like the cashier system and the burglar alarm. And kids, you know what? In Japan, toilets are computers and there's even hackers who hack them. 
And we go further, and I give the children these little stickers with an on-off button on them. And I tell the kids, today you have this magic ability to make anything in this room into a computer. And then once I had this little girl who came to me and took a bicycle lamp and she said, if this bicycle lamp was a computer, we could go on a biking trip with my father, we would sleep in a tent, and this biking lamp, it could also be a movie projector. And that's the moment I'm looking for. The moment when the kid realizes that the world is definitely not ready yet. That a really awesome way of making the world more ready is by building technology. And that each one of us can be a part of that change. This is the last generation of kids that will remember a computer by the keyboard and the screen. The next generation is already chatting away with computers. The very first computers in the world were humans. Being a computer used to be a profession, much like being a teacher or a doctor, but for someone great at calculating long series of numbers. The word technology comes from Greek, and it means the tools to solve a problem, but also the skills and competencies that us humans bring into the problem solving. Today's technology is the computer, but yesterday's technology was the combustion engine, and before that it was the bicycle. We don't know what the future of technology will look like, but we do know that we humans will be involved. Linda, where is internet? Mm -hmm.